Hey everyone, how's it going? So what are we working on today? I've got an 08 F-150 with a 4.6. The customer's complaint is of a check engine light. He says he knows he, he knows he has an EVAP system problem and he's been trying to address this for a while with different shops and nobody's been able to straighten out the problem. He's had supposedly he had something done with the with the pressure sensor. He's had something done with the vent valve or in the, and the charcoal canister and stuff like that. And from what I can see, it looks like it's already been changed. So what I want to show you is this, and I want to show you something with connectors that I do not personally I don't approve of. I don't. I, I, I think they're hokey. I think they're junk, and I'll explain why. A lot of people you've seen commercials for them, and they seem pretty good. But let me just show you what I'm talking about. Of course, the compressor starts up. Let me shut that off. Hold on a second. Okay, so with the compressor off, what I want to show you is this. On the scanner, whoops, let me turn the light off. If you're looking at the bottom line there, fuel tank pressure, inches of vacuum there, it's showing negative two. Basically, it's in a vacuum at this point. But is it really? How can it be in a vacuum if the fuel cap is off? It's not in a vacuum. So let's come up underneath here and you can actually reach the fuel tank pressure sensor uh, relatively easy. Let me just show you. So it's right here and as you can see, see that? Yeah. So let's unplug this and let's see what happens. Can I reach up there and actually unplug this easily? Oh, yes, I can. Okay. So these connectors here, I can't stand these things. I'll explain that in a minute. Well, let's come back over here. Now it's saying that we're at 16 inches, well, it's actually not vacuum at this point, or it, before it was negative vacuum, maybe not as positive vacuum, who knows, but I, to me, that's pressure. What it actually means, I'm not 100% certain uh, in terms of what their parameters are, is what I'm talking about. But right now, it's in a positive, to me, that means pressure. So, why do I have a problem with these connectors? Why, why do I have a problem with them? All right, first off, These connectors, these are the ones that you put the two wires together and then you heat it up and it solders itself together. That's all fine and dandy. How do you know you got a good connection? You haven't the slightest idea if you have a good connection. It's being held together by heat shrink and that solder on the end, but how do you know that solder has made a good connection? You ever try to solder a wire together and sometimes you just can't get it to actually solder? Because it's not making a good connection? Well, how do you know with that? It's encapsulated, you can't tell. You don't know. I'd be willing to bet the resistance is high. Can't guarantee it, but I can I can almost bet it will. I, I put a dollar on that. So what I'm going to do is let me cut that out. Cut it out. I'm going to cut that out of there, and I'm going to actually run my regular connectors in there. These kind, these straight up non-insulated buck connectors. I'm going to put heat shrink on top of it. And then we're going to put this back together. And then also what I'm going to do is I'm going to verify those wires are in the right orientation because whoever did that, how do you know that they put the wires in the right spot? I don't know. So I'm going to have to check on that. So let me check on that. And I'm going to cut that out. And then we're actually going to measure the resistance of those wires. I'm really curious if that's a problem. So let's start doing that. Okay, not surprising one bit to me. So here I am checking a connector pin uh, diagram, the connector itself, just to make sure that the wiring was done correctly. So I'm up here and I'm reaching into it and I'm pulling on the wires as I'm checking them to make sure I got the right wires going into the right position. And guess what? One wire pulled right out. So as you can see, by looking at the wire, the solder never made any kind of a connection. So how good are these things? Seriously. These things are trash. Throw them out. If you have them, get rid of them. They don't, they don't work well. I mean, if you want to trust them and stuff, you do. Maybe you've used them, you've had good luck. But I've, I've fixed more of these than you can imagine. 
these regular crimp connectors. I love when people use regular crimp connectors. Oh, scotch locks, that's another one. If you're using scotch locks, put the tools away, walk away. You don't, you should not be touching vehicles, okay? I can't stand it when I see them on trailers too. They, they, they are the worst connectors. They use them on stereos too. If you're using it on stereos, there again, pack up your stuff. You shouldn't be working on vehicles. Let me cut this connector completely out and um, get it on the bench here and we'll look at it. Two of them just pulled apart. Oh, I just pulled right apart. Nope. I mean, I had to put a little tension on it, but I think the only thing holding this together on those two was the heat shrink. Oh, there. That one came off too. It never penetrated. Hold on a second. Can I get this to focus in? It never penetrated the wire. I mean, come on. This stuff is garbage. Absolute garbage. All right, let me get these off of here. And let's fix this the right way. Now, I'm not saying that this is the problem, but this is the problem I'm finding right now. Could it be the, the whole problem? Absolutely. I don't know yet. I gotta fix this first, but there could be an additional problem. I just don't know it yet, but I gotta start here. So, let's continue. All right, so, just curious if these ends will come off of here. Oh. <laughs> uh. trying to pull these out but as you can see I'm trying not to destroy yeah I mean they're not doing anything these things are absolutely not doing anything the solder never held where's the solder Solder's not on there. It doesn't exist. All right. Let's cut these down. All right. So now, like I said, I used the solderless connectors on here. These might be too small. I gotta see I just, what I grabbed. Although these are probably fine for the other side, but just not for this side because the aftermarket wire connector has such a big wire in it. Yeah, I don't think these are gonna work. Yeah, these are way too small. Let me get the other size and see. All right. So now I have the slightly larger one I'm going to put on there. I want to get one that's going to fit on this side like really good because it's going to be slightly oversized for the other side. Now you know that's a good connection there. And no, you don't have to solder it. I know there's some people out there that Say, oh, you got to solder everything. No, you don't. Find me a soldered connection anywhere on the car. You're not going to find one. You can solder it if you like, if you're good at it. Go right ahead. But there's no need to, is what I'm telling you. At least in my book, And I'm curious, does any manufacturer solder any connections? I've never run into it, but maybe there is somebody out there that does that. I'm just not aware of it. All right, so that's all nicey nice. This type of heat shrink is the type that has glue in it. 
because you want to have glue in there to keep moisture out. So there we go, that's all prepped. Now I'm gonna go clean the wires on the other side and unfortunately, I really can't film it. I can't get up inside there enough to be able to film this for you to see it. So I'm gonna get up there, I'm gonna do what I have to do, then I'll show you the end result. All right, so I got that all set. Let's plug this thing back in. As you can see, I got the heat shrink on there. So everything should be good. Now, like I said, too, I can't guarantee that this was the problem, but it is a problem. I know it's a problem, but I don't know if it's the problem. Let me grab my lights so I don't forget those. Lord knows I've done that before. Uh, let's see. All right. Shut these down so they're not lit up. All right, so it's plugged in. Let's see what the actual reading is. All right, so let's see what we got. Oh, there we go. The reading changed. See that? Okay. So basically, what does this tell you? Stay away from those connectors. All right, let me wrap this up so we can get this back to the customer. Okay, so back inside, and I got it running, and you can actually see changes, which I could never see before. There you see the actual vacuum is changing. Let me see, I don't know if I got enough temperature in this thing yet, but let me see. Oh, I gotta clear the check engine light. I must have induced the check engine light because I had it unplugged and everything else. Let me go back. Those clear codes. Let me go back and see if I can't do a functional test of the EVAP system. It may not be warm enough, but we'll find out. Uh, let's see, EVAP, oh gosh. Start engine, blah, 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 blah. If the test does not start, increase the RPMs to 1500. Okay, well, the RPMs just increased on their own. This would never pass before. It would fail. This could take up to 20 minutes. So let's just hang out and hang out and see what happened. It's actually going to the holding vacuum test, which I'm not sure if it actually made it that far the last time. All right, let's let this thing run, and we'll see what happens. Then I'll come back to you. And very good, it passed. No gross leak detected, which before it had such a bad leak, or it thought it had a bad leak, that it would say, you know, it would have the gas cap thing come up and everything else. But it actually never had a leak, so why is that? Because it never saw a change in the pressure sensor. So the fact that it never saw a change, it thought it just had a massive leak. That's why there was no change. So. Yay, I'm happy with that. That means it's fixed. Uh, this thing also had a misfire. The misfire is gone. Uh, what I did was I actually, this thing was in last week. I didn't make a video on it. Um, had a misfire on cylinder two that was erratic. It will come and go. And what I did was I swapped the coils and from one and two, and I swapped plugs from two and three. And um, the misfire didn't come back. So then the customer's like, you know what? Just put a set of plugs in it. So I put a set of plugs in it. And don't you know, the misfire actually came back one day and it's set as misfire on cylinder number one. So I just put a cylinder number one coil in it because that was a coil that was at number two. So, 
All right, let me take this thing for a road test, make sure everything's good, and then we're going to wrap this up. All right, so everything went great on the road test. No issues. I'm happy with that. I mean, it passed the garage test or whatever you want to call it, that EVAP test, which it would never do that before. So I'm happy with that. So let's conclude. These things, garbage. Don't use them. They don't work. They sound great. They make the videos look great. You know, that they're like a, you know, any anybody with a half a brain that can use a cigarette lighter can actually fix wiring with one of these. No, no. These create more problems than they're worth. Throw them out. Um, if you bought a whole set of them, throw them out. That's all. Garbage. Anyway, so that's pretty much it. Hopefully you got something out of that video. If you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.